is going on? Shout outs to everybody here. What is going on? I got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> I got a lot of shit going on today, man. It's ridiculous. So shout outs to everybody here. We are in the building. You guys been telling me to do mic shows. So um, I, um, I'm moving stuff around in the studio today because um, just because and I got some mics here. Actually got a lot of mics here. Um, some of my best mics aren't here though. This is just a fraction. This is just a fraction <laughs> of what I got. And um I wanna I need to clean some of these mics. Some of these mics, I need to send them to the shop and get them clean. Some of these mics got corrosion on them, man. I I you know I need to get a a mic box to keep all of this shit in. This, this is a problem. I'm not even gonna lie. This is this is a problem. Um <laughs> know if i've been diagnosed yet i'm pretty sure i haven't but and i wanted to show you guys my other electric voice that i have which is the re 27 nd but go look at my old tech shows you guys will see it there um i don't have the well i do have the sm7b but i'm not about to unhook actually i should unhook it nah i'm okay i'm not about to unhook it Y'all just wait till I do a tech show on it. This is enough mics for today. Um, Danica Marie says she has a big announcement. I don't know. W were you pregnant? I I'll be scared when bitches say that. Oh, I have an announcement. Uh, my bad, y'all. All right, let's get to today's show. It's Player Talk Radio. Shout outs to everybody here. Let me turn this music down just a tad bit. So, yeah, man. Shout outs to everybody here. <laughs> Shout outs to everybody here. We are in the building. Um, so, you guys asked me about microphones. So, first of all, let me explain the madness that you see here on the desk. This is just a myriad of, myriad of mics. I'm pretty sure I got some more laying around here that I haven't spotted. This is, um, this is uh, what I've spotted and what I could spot. So, um, the question would be, yo, why do you have so much mics? Well, there's, that, that's a question you really can't answer. There's so many different reasons why to have a bunch of mics. I even got some knockoffs here. Actually, two good knockoffs. I'm pretty sure Banjo would get a uh, laugh out of it. But that's because there's, diff there's, there's many different cases that you guys uh, would need to use these microphones in. Well, not you guys, because you guys are really only using this shit for, like, gaming and getting on the, the internet and yelling at people. So, it's really not that much case usage for a lot of people here, uh, you know, that's probably listening to use it. But, like I said, in the Manosphere, I am the microphone king. You're not going to find anybody that's that that can that can beat me at this mic shit. Not 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 easily at least. You know, I mean of course somebody could whip out a TLM 103. Well, I got a TLM 102 for y'all. <laughs> a knockoff. Or whatever. But let's get into it, man. Um you got different types of mics that are used in different types of situations. And of course, all of them can be used in a similar situation, but some are bred and meant to be used in a better situation, you know, in better situations. Um, I can't even show you my Zoom. We got all kinds of mics here. You got shotgun mics. This is a shotgun mic from Zoom, uh, which are the handy recorders. Uh, this is what I would, this is what I use for my, uh, for the, like the ASMR video. Well, not really the ASMR. I use the actual binaural headphones and I can't even find that here. Where the hell is that shit? Damn. Anyway, this is a shotgun mic. This is one of those mics that you put on the top of the camera and you just point it in one direction. It's an end fire. You point it in one direction and um, yeah, it'll, it'll pick up that direction. You know, all you got to do is you point it and you pick it up. Now, the reason why you will have something like this on top of it is to stop the plosives and to also block out some of the wind. You also have something else called a dead cat, which is a lot more furrier, but I prefer to use something like this, which you know helps with the plosive rejections when you say paul picks a pizza pronto is you know pretty cool so you you know you'll have this on it you know hooked into the zoom on top of your camera and you just have it pointed towards you and 
shotgun mics are really good so that you can pick up the audio without the microphone on screen. Because a lot of people, they, 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 you know, they don't, they don't want their microphone to be on screen, you know, unless it's pretty like some of the mics that I have here that's probably going to get keyed out. So let's get into it. So like I said, you have different types of mics. Um, some of these need to get lint and fur and stuff off of it. This is a lavalier mic. Uh, these are pretty cool. Um, Y'all seen my other one, the Rode, that I have. And see, these are pretty lengthy because you never know how long you might need it. It's a lavalier mic. I should have showed y'all the Rode. I have a Rode mic um, that I'm not going to get on today's show. I'll show it to you next time. But is this is the receiver for it. It basically looks like this. But I put it on a stick and uh, covered it with uh, with one of those. And um, yeah, made it into an interviewer mic. But I have an interviewer mic here that I can show you. That's a receiver for it. So it's wireless. But this lavalier, this is wired. And these are pretty good just to pick up audio. But I wouldn't say that the audio on on these lavalier mics you know they 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 can i mean some of them work pretty good they can be pretty dynamic but this is just to basically just to the point get what you're talking about and go you know you hook this on to your clothing and um it works pretty good you know and um but this one you still got to xlr it into something so you know but uh pretty dope mic nonetheless you have dynamic mics you got condenser mics also, I have a, um, my whole, uh, duster done fell. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get it. But I actually have a, a, a cable here. So some of these mics, I can, I can plug them in and you guys can hear how they, they sound. So let's plug in this, uh, let's plug in this lavalier mic. You gotta find the hole. That's what she said. Plug in this lavalier mic. And let's, uh, it's, I think it's a condenser. So let me uh, plug it in and let me show you how it sounds. And you might pick up more room noise. The mic that I'm using right now, the mic that I'm using right now is the Shure MV7. It's the regular one, not the X. This is the regular Shure MV7. Beautiful dynamic mic. Looks like the SM7B. I don't have the, I do have the SM7B here, but I'll show it to y'all later at a different show. But I do have one of their competing mics that competes with the SM7B, which is the uh, RE20. So, well, let's take a listen to how this lavalier mic sounds. Let's, I'm looking at the levels. Let's uh, turn it up just a tad bit. It's floating, so maybe I think it needs condenser. I mean, it needs, uh, it needs phantom power. Let's see how it sounds. Give me one second. Let's mute up this one. And, uh-oh, it's a little bit too loud. Let's go down. Let's go down let's go down so this is how this is how it sounds um i need to i need to uh i need to actually hook it to my clothes but this is how it sounds as you can see you can pick up a lot of plosives so you would want to have it a little bit further away so um but i'm talking directly into it it's not that bad but i would like to have it further away but it is a good mic, you know, newscasters, um, if you're on the road, if you're moving around or something like that, this will be pretty good. But as you can see, the sound is not consistent. Um, if I turn my head or if I look up or if I look down or if I go anywhere else, you can see that the volume does drop off. So this will be good if you're sitting in place and you have the microphone placed in a, in a, in a really, really good place and you can um, you can talk. You know, um, just have it in a really good place, point it towards you. You kind of want to shotgun it on your person. And uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool microphone. So that's the lavalier mic. That will be the case that you would want to use a lavalier mic. So as you see, let's switch back to the MV7. As you see, it doesn't sound bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, but... It's a smaller mic, small diaphragm. Sometimes you got the small with the big diaphragms. They're omnidirectional, some of them. You get what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? So, um, let's see. This is an old mic that I had. I had a black one. I don't know where the black one went. Uh, this one has corrosion on it. I tried to put the... Dang, this thing... These things lose shape and then gain back shape. But dang, this thing got corrosion on it. 
and the corrosion the moisture you got to make sure you got these things in the right place man the moisture done oh man these are about a good 20 bucks to use a nice wipe down I need to take my baby up out of that 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 uh that that uh that locker that I had. Got my favorite mic here. So uh this ain't my favorite mic, but let's see how much this uh let's see what the dollar store, not the dollar store, but let's see. Let's see what the twenty dollar mic sounds like. Let's let's mute up and get back. Okay, and this is the sound of uh this is the sound of a $20 condenser mic. So like I said, some of these mics are condenser and some of these mics are, um, you know, some of them are, um, some of them are condenser and some of, and a lot of them are dynamic. So let me mute the music. Some of these are condenser and a lot of them are dynamic. This one is a condenser mic and the condenser mics, they're for vocals. You understand what I'm saying? So you should be able to hear my voice, uh, you know, a lot better. All right. And, and the thing is, is that yo, I'm getting handling noise because these mics, they're meant, they're not meant to be handled. Not handheld. So that's another case why you may want to get a handheld mic, something that you can hold in your hand. You won't get any rumble noise or anything like that. But EQ'd right, this mic will sound good. And... Honestly, it sounds real neutral, but I'm running it through the Zoom P4, so it probably sounds better than if you're running it through like a regular, uh, you know, like a regular, a regular interface or anything. But a pretty good mic, you know, a uh, really good mic. Uh, you want to use this for the plosives, and and um, this is an end address microphone. Mean, I want to talk into it like this. Not like this. Usually when you talk into it from the top, that's a dynamic mic. That's an end address mic. We'll see that later on today. So $20, you can go get you a BM800. You can get you this, what is it called? You can get you a Florion, 20 bucks. No excuse in the Manosphere not to have at least good sounding. $20. 20 you can spend another 80 and go get you an interface or whatever, but 20 bucks. Come on now. Let's get back to the MV7. So, <laughs> god damn. There you go, you know. And this pop filter will definitely round out. This is The mic's okay. 20 bucks. What else we have? We have the knockoff mic. Hold on. Let me put this in its case. Which is actually not its case. <laughs> I got it in the Brio case, that's probably why. It got corrosion on it. You know, corrosion finds it. When you got moisture, you got to make sure, man. You got to, I got to, I got to, I have it in a drawer. So the moisture got to it a little bit. Get some cleaner or something. Let's get into the TLM 102. I actually like this microphone. Bandrew doesn't like this microphone because it comes from China. It is made very cheap. And it's supposed to imitate uh, the Neumann TLM 102. And um, I'm not going to lie. I, I, you know, I just think that it's a different type of microphone. Um, it sounds a little bit muffled. It is a condenser mic. Um, well, let's plug it in. Let's, let's check it out. You guys leave a comment down below which one, which one you may like. I'm going to premiere this show so you guys can comment in real time uh, which ones you may like. Okay, we got it plugged in. Let's take turn off this mv7 and let's check the sound of this mic so now we're speaking into the tlm 102 like i said if you can hear it you guys 
have to understand the difference between sounds like i'm really up on this microphone i can uh move a little bit further back or i can put this windscreen on it so we'll have a different sound a different a different type of sound going but these microphones like i said this one is muffled do you see how like kind of repressed and muffled um my vocals are that way when i get loud it can capture the whole thing you understand what i'm saying so you know you get that muffly kind of different sound as a matter of fact it sounds a tad bit different than the actual TLM 102 from Neumann. But it's meant to sound very similar. You know, Chinese people, they make the knockoffs of stuff. So, you know, pretty cool mic. I like it. But it's not what it should be. And, I, and, and reasonably, I understand if you own a Neumann and stuff like that to get to that level. Yeah, you, you know, these knockoffs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But tell me what you think, you know, back to the Shure MV7. Really cool mic. There was another mic that I bought, which is an, uh, also a knockoff, but it's made by an American company. I think this mic is pretty cool. I recorded some of my music with it, which is pretty dope. If y'all go look at the last show that I did, and I told you guys about the Isotope. Um, some of these mics, I hooked them into the Isotope. You know what I'm saying? And record music with them. So let's plug in this cam crystal. This is supposed to imitate the bigger the bigger brother of the TLM 102, which is the Neumann TLM 103, which is a large diaphragm. This is a large diaphragm also. Um, that knockoff Chinese mic, I paid about 100 bucks for it. It was about 100 bucks, a little bit over, like maybe 120 with shipping and stuff, because that, that joint came straight from China. And I bought it like as deep in the middle of the pandemic. But let's see what the cam crystal, let's see how this sounds. All right, now we're speaking into the cam crystal and um, it sounds pretty good. I like the way that it sounds. It's uh, bright. Um, it does sound semi-muffled, but it's pretty bright. Um, it's awesome. Um, I have a lot of fucking microphones. I don't know how we're going to get through today's show. <laughs> but it sounds really good. Um, I like it. It's pretty bright. Um, a lot of times, I'm going to tell you something about uh, knockoffs, okay? Knockoffs can go either way. Would I want to be seen on camera with it? Uh, not really, unless I'm like doing something in the studio or something like that, and I'm really thinking, not really thinking about it. But I'm going to tell y'all some, something real. Y'all don't hear the difference. A lot of people don't even know what the hell they're listening to. They're more focused on what the person is the person is saying more than what they're actually hearing. And then sometimes they are focused on what they're hearing because to really focus on what the person is saying, it got to sound a certain type of way or has to come off a certain type of way or, you know, blah, 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 you know. So, I mean, can you tell the difference? I mean, I should, I should uh, do some sound samples with the actual TLM 103. But that's a show for another day. This is the TLM 103 knockoff by Cam Crystal. Back on to the shore, MV7. We just did three condenser mics and a condenser. Uh, we did three condenser mics and a condenser. Um, lavalier mic three condenser mics and a condenser lavalier mic now before my light goes off let me do this hold on y'all let me do this what are your thoughts uh, let's see what else we have. We got we go, we're gonna do dynamics l last. So this is my baby. This is one of my best mics that I have for vocals, aside from my Lewitt LCT 540 Sub Zero. I need to fix this one also. This one 
has a bit of corrosion on it also but it's not as bad this is my Rode NT1A and um, beautiful microphone uh, very bright these compete with the Neumanns this is like a $220 microphone sometimes 300 and it competes with the Neumann um, really good vocal mic this is a brighter mic and the pin Dang, I didn't think the pins would look like this, but okay. Let's take a listen to the Rode NT1A, which is this mic. Let's take, take a listen. Okay, now we're listening into the Rode NT1A. I'm not going to turn it down just too much because it's a bit bright. But you guys should be able to hear. This shit sounds fire, bro. This thing picks up your voice really good. When you're doing, like, voice acting, this is what you want. Also, I mean, it is fairly bright. It picks up everything in the room. And it can pick up everything in the room. The best thing to do is have it sound treated. But if you're doing voiceover, man, oh, man. You could, you could just hear the money, you know. Jim walked down the street. Jim didn't know there was some fuck nigga beside the bridge waiting for him to come beside the bridge so he can up that chopper. But let me stop. <laughs> uh, let me stop. All right. This thing is doing too much now. It's really the cord that's making that static noise, you know. Um, But these mics are awesome. They're still fairly new. It's just I just had them for a long time. They've just been just collecting. I wouldn't say collecting dust. I actually need to turn my camera off because the lens is on. It's a peekaboo lens and the lens is open and I don't know why I have it out like that. I have a lot going on if you haven't noticed. But these uh, condenser mics, they're awesome. They pick up everything. So you got to make sure you have a fairly quiet, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, spot to record. Or if anything, use a noise gate or make sure that the uh, the interface that you're sending it into has a noise gate or it has a high uh, gain level. So that way your noise floor is uh you know is a little bit higher but this thing is gonna pick up everything it's a end address mic what? let me switch back to the mv7 it's not an end address mic you have to have this mic pointed straight up and you're talking into it you know one thing i hate about the yeti is that a lot of people just want to turn it this way or turn it that way and it's like bro you, you no don't do that Speaking of Yeti, where the hell is my Yeti? Usually, it's somewhere around me. Okay, it's over there sitting on the table. It's not like I was going to plug it in anyway. Like, you know, Come on now. Uh, we're going to talk about this one also. But this is, yeah, you know, and this got a big old shock mount that, uh, you know, that goes, uh, that it goes in. Really, really, really beautiful microphone. I guess it's mine now. Because the corrosion. What else do we got, Cuda? Well, we did a bunch of uh, dynamics. Not a bunch of dynamics. We did a bunch of condenser microphones. Let's start getting into these dynamic microphones. That uh, Rode uh, for 220, you can't beat that. Actually, let's get into some more dy uh, dynamic mic. I mean, let's get into some more uh, condenser mics before we get into the dynamic ones. The new King B just dropped, um, but I have the original one. I actually have two of them. Uh, this one, I'm not. Let me check my screen. I'm not sure if this yellow is keyed out. Okay, you guys can see it. This needs to get wiped off too. This is a bit ashy. And it's a bit heavy. It comes in this big shock mount. Um, I just did a live not too long ago with it. Really beautiful microphone. You want to speak to the front. This right here is a pop filter. This is the microphone. Large diaphragm. These microphones. And see, it popped. So this thing is popped out. So I'm just using this as a worker mic. Speaking of worker, I we'll get into the worker beam which you guys can also see on the table, but large diaphragm, beautiful microphone. Um, you can see where it fell, um, and it takes a, quite a tumble. Real 
beautiful microphone. If you can get past the aesthetic, sometimes the aesthetic throws people off. But what the hell just dropped? Uh, anyway, I'm getting tired of this shit. Make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And um, it's just a beautiful mic. I mean, um, I like it. You know, I don't know too many people that's like gonna like the B aesthetic. One thing which is pretty cool, if you see that this B logo right here, um, when you plug it in, and here's where the plug is. When you plug it in, and you got the phantom power on, you see it lights up. And when I turn the phantom power off, it turns off. See that? If you can see it. Turn it back on. Lights up. And this thing is a very good vocal mic. Um, this is like the Blue Ember. Uh, the people from Blue at the time made, the, made this microphone. They have a company called Neat. And um, these were 100 bucks. Um, I actually got the boxes sitting beside me. That's kind of crazy. I got like three of them. These were like 100 bucks. These are steel. Also, the baby brother, this is the king bee. You have the worker bee, and the worker bee is right here. And these things are just phenomenal. You, These are steel. But you can see the difference in the sizes, too. You know, the worker bee is really good. Um, a lot of people use the worker bee for instruments and stuff like that and picking up drum cabs and and guitars and stuff, but it's, it's pretty good on vocals. Same thing with this one, but this one is more vocal-oriented. But you can still use it for those cases also. They color everything pretty great. So, honestly, when you guys hear me switch from this dynamic microphone to this condenser microphone, you're going to hear the difference. I'm going to sound a lot more brighter. And um, let's check it out. Let's, let's hear what the King B sounds like. Now you're listening to me speak into the King B. And if you guys can tell the difference, uh, congratulations, you know. Make sure you wear headphones on today's show. You need to wear headphones so you guys can be able to tell the difference. It's like night and day. You can hear me on this. This is the King B. This is the Shore MV7X. Shore MV7X. King B. Can you tell the difference? And um, it, it, this thing is just awesome. I mean, I, I love it. Um, I have fun with it. It's beautiful. Pretty dope. Heavy as hell, but pretty dope. Let's get to the next one. And I want you guys to leave in the comment section down below which one is your favorite, looks wise, blah, blah, blah. So we're back on the MV7. Let me plug in this worker bee. And let's take a listen to how the worker bee sounds. Now we're speaking into the neat worker bee. I will have uh, some more. Actually, my bad, y'all. I will have some more videos coming featuring the worker bee and the king bee alongside each other. We'll do voice tests. We'll do plosives tests. The plosives don't sound bad because the filter is on. These microphones can get a lot more brighter than what you hear. And um, they're just pretty they're, they're pretty awesome. Um, of course, they're condenser mics, but they have a really low noise floor. They don't really pick up that much, you know, unless you're, you're you know, unless you, something is just being ridiculously loud. Like if somebody vacuuming or some shit like that, of course, it's going to pick it up just a tad bit. But. It goes back into your interface, you know, and then, you know, when you got microphones like this, you know, definitely have a decent interface running it. So this is the Worker B. Sounds pretty good, huh? All right, let's get back. And I apologize for the static. Make sure, I need to make sure I uh, mute up. Shouldn't be taking this cord out, these microphones anyway. Uh, what else do we have? Do we have any more condenser mics? Let's see. Let's get into the handheld game. I've been giving y'all game. Actually, no, we have one more condenser mic. I see it. Here's another microphone you guys may want to use. Um, these come in pairs. 
which a lot of these mics do. These come in pairs. This is the CO2. Bandrew. I'm waiting for Bandrew to do uh, his, his, his uh, uh, you know, his his story on this mic. He's got capsules. Bandrew should have been did his, his, his uh, review on these. These are the Samson CO2s. I bought this one at a pawn shop. I mean, it was pretty cool. Um, some of these are in pairs, but for the most part, for the most part, uh, they get sold in uh, twos. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, and they're condensers. Because what you want to do is you want to have two pointed somewhere, and you have like a, it gives you like a really good stereo sound when you have two of them. So you got the left and right good stereo sound. Or, you know, sometimes too, you know, you want to, um, you want to use them separate. You know, this one is on one instrument. The other one's on another instrument. And then you kind of get like, you know, it's, it's dope. This, um, the reason why I bought this because it can be used as a shotgun mic also. So I can um, rig it and uh, point it somewhere. And it doesn't sound pretty bad as a shotgun mic. I'll plug it in. Um, let's check it out. So I'm plug it in. Take a listen. So now we're using the Samson CO2 mic. I think I paid about 80 bucks for this. They're like 200 220 for the stereo pair. But um, as you notice that there's uh, plosives on it. So, you know, you might want to, I mean, whatever direction that you point it in is going to pick it up. But you might want to uh, back up. And even if you back up, there's a bit of plosives there. So relatively, you want to kind of have it close to the source, but you do want to you do want to check for uh, popping, and then you do want to check for um, for clipping. You know what I'm saying? Um, th th these things are pretty. These things are pretty. Um, they're pretty sensitive. You know, um, but can capture really great sound um, if you if used correctly. Okay. All right. Let's get back. So we're back on the MV7, and um, I'm going to put this Samson a little bit further over. So um, these are some mics. The next line of mics, these are some mics that I've recommended. Um, I even have shows for them out, even though I'm going to update the shows and give you guys uh, some game on um, how I feel about these microphones, uh, you know, months to years later. This shore right here. This is about 20 something dollars. This is a really good microphone. This is a PG, I think 7. Okay. Um the King B um if you can find it, that's the OG King B, not the new one. The new one, I'm not sure. I think the new one's like 2, maybe 300 bucks. The old one was 100 bucks. Good luck on finding that for 100 bucks. They were 500 when they first came out and uh 4 500, then they went down to 449, then they went down to 100. So people thought Neat was going out of business. Neat didn't go out of business till like another year or two later and sold it. Um, I think to Logitech, if I'm not sure. That's what the new King B is released under. So this old King B is going to go up in value. Worker B, same deal. Worker B was 88. 80 bucks, 100 bucks. They were just giving them shits away, you know. But this right here, this is like a 27, 30 bucks, $40 mic. This PG uh forty eight PGA forty eight, and um y you know you actually have a, a mute and unmute button which is pretty cool, um and it looks just like uh the, another mic that I'm gonna show you guys which is uh big in the game, um if you are on a budget, you understand what I'm saying and it's smarter for you to put your money into your interface, than it is into your microphone at the moment, um, I would say buy the better interface. And cue it, you know, EQ it right and use a microphone such as this one. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, you know, you don't have to use a handheld mic all the time. You know, handheld mics are cool. But once you put it in, once you put it in its in its casing, I mean, it becomes like a regular dynamic microphone that's that that's strapped anywhere. I mean, of course, it's, it's not a shock mount and rumble and stuff. But, you know, these things are meant to be, you know, handle you know, uh, you know, be handled, and it doesn't sound bad. So if you're going into the voice artist thing, you know, and you're doing, like, voiceover work, you know, these things are pretty handy. And then also, 
like I, I give y'all the game when you guys are like running podcasts and stuff like that. Um, you want to have throwaway mics, man. You don't want to be using some of these four hundred, five hundred dollar mics every single time you have a guest because they'll be handling the mic, don't know what they're doing. People be spilling juice and all kinds of stuff. And um, even though this might not be the best sounding mic, the sound is pretty decent if you know if you have proper mic technique and you know exactly what you're doing. This mic can afford you. You put in work on this mic uh, with a nice interface, this mic can buy you a whole studio. You just got to grind, and that's up to you. So let's hear how it sounds. This is called the PGA48. They're about like 40, no more than 50 bucks. Don't pay no more than 50 bucks for this damn mic. You heard? Or else you might as well just get the other one that I'm going to show you. So let's plug it in. And um, I think this is a dynamic. Most microphones, yeah, these are dynamics. Most microphones that are used on stage, they're, Lord have mercy. I don't know why I turned this up. Hold on. My bad, y'all. Most microphones, what the hell? All right, there we go. My bad, y'all. Most microphones that are used on stage are dynamic. All right, let's, uh, let me, one second. Let me uh switch from the MV7 to this mic. Okay, now we're on this microphone. I turned off the phantom power, and now we can turn it up. And this microphone is pretty good. I act, I actually wasn't going to use the MV7. Um, I actually want to include the MV7 in this video, but it's not that bad. This microphone is pretty bright, if you guys can hear. There's uh, more top end, not that much bass, but um, it's more medium to top end. And... That's what this microphone is intended for. You know, it's, it's intended for uh, speech application. So, you know, get you a nice little stand. Use the stand holder. And uh, you talk it to the top of this microphone. It's not a side address microphone. You try to talk it to the sides, you're going to have problems because it's a dynamic micro drone. Uh, micro drone. It's a dynamic microphone that has end fire. You know, you, 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 you want to talk it to the top of it. And that's how these dynamics are. Pretty cool microphone. I think it sounds forty dollars, forty bucks. People in the manosphere can't spend forty bucks. Y'all get forty bucks in super chat. You can't spend forty bucks and go get a goddamn microphone. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. So we're back on the MV7. Pretty good mic. Forty bucks, and it comes with this nice little case and everything. You get your nice little, you know. Nice little case and take it with you. You can do the mic drop. It's whatever. Um, let's get into another condenser mic. This one is pretty old. I think this one's from either the eighties. Electro Voice doesn't even make these anymore. This is one of my prized possessions. Um, it's used, but you're not gonna find them too much. And then some people, you know, one person will buy a bunch of them. You know, some people have a bunch of them. Uh, this is the ND767A. This is a neodymium mic um, from Electra Voice. Uh, I paid about like 120, 140. That's still a steal because these aren't around no more. And then sometimes these handles right here, this rubbery handle, they're in bad shape. And then they don't really make them no more. And this microphone is pretty bright. Um, I like it. These microphones go through hell. Um, some of these are, are, are very rugged, and then some of them are very sensitive. I've seen these things go out. But um, let me turn this phantom power on. I don't think this is a dynamic. I think this is a cart. Well, no, I think it is a dynamic. Neodymium. Neodymium, uh, they're magnets, you know, um, but we'll see. Let me see. I forgot. Some of these microphones, you know, they're different. And you don't have to use a cloud lifter with these, you know. But it is good to use a cloud lifter with some dynamic microphones because that way... You can really see how it will sound. To really tell how a dynamic will sound is to hear it bright also. So let's see. And here's how it sounds. Uh, it's, it's a bit bright. I like it. Um, it's pretty cool. This is a vocal mic also. So when you're on stage and you want to uh, sing and blow, this is the microphone for that. But it's a bit uh, bright. So, you know, you might want to do a couple of uh, tests before you can use it. And um, 
Honestly, I'm going to tell you the truth, y'all. Some of these handheld mics for your podcast, this is what you might want to get because um, it just sounds good, easily, easy listening. They're durable. Um, they're just awesome mics, and um, uh, their, 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 their voice pattern is just, you can just pick them up, and they're really good, you know. Um, I did some of the commercials for, um, I got the other mic that I did some of the commercials for, um, not even commercials, but they're like shorts, so I guess, or they're just, I'm, just, I'm explaining something, so I guess you could say they're commercials for Clubhouse, you know. Um, but these microphones are just phenomenal. Um, I really enjoy this microphone. Keep it in good shape. Let's go. Okay. Back on the MV7. And you know what's funny? They re-released, and these this is really soft, cushiony. You know what's funny? They re-released, uh, they re-released the MV7, uh, X. They re-released the MV7 and just said MV7 X. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is just the XLR version of this. You might as well just get both, the XLR and the USB. But maybe maybe it's different. I don't know if uh, they changed anything on it, but maybe it's different. So here's one of my favorite mics, if not my one of my most favorite mics, the SEV7. These are about 100, 110, 120. This is a steel. They also have a, the black inserts. I like the red, but this is a steel. You know, um, you can also, you know, check out the insides of the microphone and you can also replace your windscreen with the with the black one which is pretty good if you want to preserve your red one also these things you could just take them off they got heads for these they got different types of uh removable heads and stuff uh for these microphones which are which is which is pretty interesting you know they're they're actually pretty interesting um they got the uh, uh, Billy Eilish actually uses this microphone, and then they got the, the what's his name something Gibbons, he uses it also. He has a, a a silver version with the purple insert, which looks fire. Uh, the reason why these are flat right here is when you put it down, you don't want it to roll off the table, so it's to stop it from rolling. Whereas this is the worst case to put it on, but it's to stop the microphone from rolling. Um, this has a really good sound for speech and singing. These handheld mics are very versatile. Um, I actually, I actually got these mixed up. These handheld mics are actually very versatile, and um, this is for the V7. The, the, this hap this tends to happen, y'all. See how the V7 just fits snug into it? There you go. But um, yeah, these mics, man. Um, these handheld mics, man, y'all don't sleep on these goddamn handheld mics, man. These handheld mics, uh, they're they're very versatile with what they can do. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just leaving them one place, you know, you can move them around, you can bang them, you can throw them in a in a bag and whatever. So, you know, even just having a regular podcast, you want to have regular mics that are very durable. You know what I'm saying? And I love the sound of this SE Electronics. Let's plug it in. And now we're talking into the SE Electronics V7, and it sounds great. I don't know if you noticed, though, but it's it, it keeps it in the middle towards the low. Um, it does sound a bit muffled, but it's not bad. It's a it's a pretty good muffled, and um, this helps with range. You know, dynamic range when you're when you're hitting those high notes and stuff like that, because you don't want it to be too bright to a certain degree. You want to have a nice, controlled, tame sound. So you know, it's not going to be hard for you to raise your voice and people can hear you, and it's not going to be too hard for you to lower your voice. Really good overall dynamic microphone. Really good for on stage, like I said. Remember, you got a whole bunch of people in the audience and in the crowd literally yelling right in front of you. <laughs> so, you know, you do need to have some type of noise rejection. And these microphones are just awesome with noise rejection. Anything behind it, um, uh, you know, de for the most part, dead end, dead zone. Everything in front of it, you can pick it up. But 
just awesome mic. You know, just an awesome microphone. Let's get back to the MV7. And now we're back on the MV7. Can y'all tell the difference? Can y'all hear the difference? Does it make a difference? Or are you guys hearing the same thing? Make sure you're not listening to it on your cell phone. Don't let me catch you listening to this shit on your cell phone, even though I know you are. Um, I don't have my actual case for this one with me because I had it here for some aesthetic. But anyway, let's get into the granddaddy of them all. You got the Shure SM58. Oh, wow. Got my bands and everything falling out. God damn. Where's all this hair coming from? The SM58. This microphone here is the daddy of them all. This microphone, you've seen it before, and it looks just like that PGA. This this microphone invented the mic drop. This microphone is indestructible. People done ran this over with their car, picked it up, and used it. This microphone can weather the storm. This, these microphones go through hell. If you've been on stage or somewhere or seen somebody on stage, nine times out of ten, you've seen this microphone. And it's... And it's is is hard, you know what I'm saying, a homo. But it's a dope ass mic. And um like I said, they got tops for these, like these 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 mics they get a bit weird. Then there's a guy who does like uh he does like wiring and stuff like that. He he can he he rigs his to sound like a uh SM7B. These sound like a SM7B SM7B regardless. You know, they're really similar. If not the same exact thing. It's just that this one is a hundred bucks. It's a hundred dollars. And the SM seven B is four fifty. <laughs> and like I said, you know, really dope. You know, talk it to the end of it. Let's hear what it sounds like. Now we're talking into the SM58. And if you notice, it sounds a little bit similar to the MV7, doesn't it? Here's the SM58. Here's the MV7. SM50. Hold on. SM58. MV7. SM58. MV7. SM58. And um, it's supposed to sound similar. Like the MV7 was made to sound similar uh, to, you know, the SM7B. But it's its own thing, you know. Um, and it looks like a baby SM7B. Now, what's the deal with this mic? I think everybody should own one. If you don't have an SM7B, you're better off getting this uh, SM58. You can't go wrong because if you buy your SM7B, you got to turn around and get a cloud lifter or some type of mic activator. And you better make sure that you have an interface that could actually uh, run, uh, you know, or, or if you're not using that, your interface got to at least do about 60 worth of gain so you don't run your amplifier hot. This is a beautiful mic. Really good mic, really underrated mic, really indestructible mic. Get this mic, $100, can't beat it, use it for voiceover. You're damn near going to make the money back and then some on your first gig. Can't beat it. Let's go to the next one. Now we're back on the uh, MV7. Can't really tell the difference because these mics are really good. I've been making the same mic since the 60s, 70s, 80s. Really good mic. And like I said, it is no different than when you, you get your mic stand and you plug it in and you just do your voice acting and stuff. Real portable, easy to carry with you. You did. And you get a nice little carrying case. Now, I put this, I put uh, these Chipotle napkins in it, not because I stole it from Chipotle and I didn't steal it from Chipotle, but just to, I, I could call myself softening the blow when you move around with it because even though it's indestructible, I still want to have it nice. Speaking of the SM7B, let's get into uh, the other ones, um, and I'll show you some more mics that um, that had uh, that I had a, a, a crush on. Uh, one of the mics that I had a crush on was this mic right here, this Rode Pod mic. Really beautiful mic. This mic is heavy. 
This mic is a little bit over two pounds. Very heavy. So we're going to start to get into this territory. They made this mic to compete with the SM7B because they sound pretty similar, but the SM7B has uh, is made for singing, where this one is just made strictly for podcasting. You can't go wrong with this mic. This mic is 100 bucks. This is a steal. You need to find this mic as soon as possible and get it. But you need equipment because this thing is heavy. Whatever you, whatever boom arm you put this thing on, it's going to play with it. Okay? It's going to bully the boom arm. So you got to make sure you have a good boom arm. I would say get the PSA 1 or a compass. I would take the PSA 1 over a compass from Rode. You know? Really good microphone. Not good for singing, but very good for speech and podcasting. Sounds similar to the SM7B. The they were selling these with the with the, the, this is this is like a package deal for Rode unveiling the Rodecaster. Uh, the the thing was okay if you're getting your Rodecaster or you're doing a podcast, you can get four of these microphones for the price of one SM7B. You know. And I don't know if the price have went up on it, but let's take a listen to it. And this was the one I was going to actually use for this show, but I ended up using the MV7. So let's take a look. Let's take a listen, my bad. Now we are in, we're, well, I said we are in. We're talking into the Rode Pod Mic, and this is a dope-ass microphone. I like the sound of it. It's pretty cool. It's neutral. It's for everybody. I mean, you know, um, when you when you're using these microphones, you got to make sure your voice matching. So if you don't know how your voice really sounds, or you you haven't found the microphone that can color your voice the way that you would like your voice to be colored, uh, and tailor your sound, it's good to go with a mic that is uh that is more neutral. You know what I'm saying? Neutral. Uh, in comparison to sound. And uh, these microphones, they're made for speech. They're made for podcasting. You get that dynamic, that radio sound. And they're very, very neutral. They're awesome. Um, You can definitely do voiceovers, voice acting, and stuff like this. Uh, stuff like that with a mic like this. You know? Really dope. Um... The reason why uh, you can't sing too much in a microphone like this is because there's a there's a drop off at the end. This mic is purely made for speech. Purely made for speech. But it's awesome. Hundred dollars. You can't beat that. You can't. Back on the shore, MV7. We're gonna set this here. Hmm. Which one is next? Let's get into the interviewer mic. This is one of my um latest mics that I've bought. Um kind of like the other one. This one's from Lewitt. This is my one of my favorite companies. This is the ENG. This is an interviewer mic. Um Hold on, y'all. Damn these mics. This is the ENG. This is an interviewer mic. Uh, this is an end address mic. You do not want to speak into the sides of this microphone because it, it, it is omnidirectional, but it, it it cancels. You know, this is, hey, what are you saying? Then you back to me. Hey, what are you saying? Then back to me. Uh, this is what's called a mic flag. At some point, I will get a banner printed or whatever that I can fit on this mic flag. I'm going to slide your microphone down into it, right? You want to take your pop filter. Put it on top. Hey, what are you saying? Okay. Back to you, Jim. Oh, shit. You know? And I don't know why my fucking makeshift rig is falling over today. But we're going to fix this. Let's plug it in. Let's take a listen to how it sounds. Obviously, that's not how it sounds, <laughs> but uh, this is how it sounds. Um, it's a little bit low. I could add a little bit more uh, volume to it, but um, it's actually pretty good. Um, I like the sound of it. Um, I was going to use it on the show, 
But I don't have one of those fancy holders for it. And honestly, it's not meant to be used in that fashion. It's meant to be used for outside and, you know, uh, passing back and forth. This is how it sounds with the pop filter on it. And this is how it sounds without the pop filter on it. And the plosives aren't that bad. Pop, 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 pop. Plosive, plosive, plosive. It's not that bad. But it sounds better with the pop filter on it. Really beautiful mic. All black. Pretty good for running gunning. All right. Back to the shore, MV7. Are you guys enjoying this? If you are, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to leave a comment and like and subscribe, you know. Also, hit the cash app, which is PTV888, PTV888. Now, I got to fix this microphone. This microphone, unfortunately, is easy to stain the matte black. This is the Aston Stealth. Now, uh, all of this is not metal. This top part is plastic. And this microphone is damn near designed to do everything. Um, you got your V1, you got your V2, you got your G, and you got your D. V1 is for male vocal. V2 is for female vocals, which is more bright. G is more for more guitar. D is for dynamic. The D also for dynamic um, is not like a regular dynamic mode. <clears throat> Especially if you're um if you're running it with a cloud lifter, um it's more it sounds it gives more of a ribbon mic type sound, like a more vintage ribbon mic type sound. Also, this thing gets stained up easily as you can see. It's not meant to be held in your hand. This is like the worst shock mount, the worst this is like a key. This is what the thing is leaning on and depending on. So you gotta make sure, you know, you don't lose this and you gotta make sure you know, um, you're using it to in the right manner because your stand will tip over. And trust me, I've done had so much scares where I have to run across the room and grab it. But the the good the, the good part about this microphone is the end address microphone. Um, this pop filter right here doesn't really work. I still use a pop filter with it. Um, you may have seen Bernard Riley using it. You know, um, I kind of really was pushing this microphone in the manosphere for a long time. Um. This thing right here, which was supposed to compete with the SM7B, you have a switch right here. And this switch right here is because this microphone has a uh, cloud lifter built into it. So you don't have to spend the extra money. These go for about like 380 maybe 400 or uh, high 300s. Um, you'll see when I plug it in, this purple light comes on. Let's see. And you can run it passive. So we're going to – I always have problems with this mic, like <laughs> with the sound, because I got to get used to it. So we can run it passive, but cloud lift is not on. It actually is engaged, but there's no phantom power going to it. But um, we'll see how it sounds passive, and then I'll engage the cloud lifter on. You're going to see a purple light light up. So let's check it out. Okay, this is the Aston Stealth. Um, I'm running it in passive mode, uh, so it's dynamic and passive. Um, this is V1. I don't really use V1 while I'm recording. Oh, let me show y'all how you turn it also. Let me switch back to the MV7. All right, we're back on the MV7. This is how you turn it also. You have to, you know, so you do have to grab this microphone. So let's go to V2, which is the female vocals. Let's see how it sounds. So now we're on the female vocals, and as you can tell, it's a lot more bright. You know, um, this is it low. This is the this is uh, V1. This is V1. See how it sounds a little bit more masculine and more muffled. And for uh, brighter and more higher pitched voice females, V2. Now you can see it's a lot more brighter. Um, hello from the other side. You know, you can get the range and shit. <laughs> Let's go to guitar. Let's see what it sounds like with the guitar. Now we're in G mode. Uh, it sounds a little bit more bright, but it still sounds a little bit ver fairly tamed, which makes sense because, you know, you put this on a guitar. This microphone was literally meant to get your male vocal, your guitar, 
your drums or I mean or or whatever you want to capture your male vocal your male vocal your female vocal guitar this is really for a session you know I put this with that goddamn isotope oh my god hell to the yeah the plosives aren't that bad this pop filter really doesn't work but if you have yourself a nice uh pop filter you should be okay now we're on dynamic and this is the mode that I would use it in and you can see it still it sounds kind of muffled and um I would have to turn it up. So a lot of these a lot of these features are better with um cuz I I think I have everything at Unity, but a lot of these features are better with the cloud lifter engaged. So let's engage the cloud lifter and try these modes again. So we're back on the MV7 and I was holding it in my hand so it is a bit ashy. Let's turn on the cloud lifter. Let's send some phantom power to it. Boom. And you see it comes right on. See that purple? Maybe you might not be able to see it, but beautiful. Let's hear how it sounds. Oh, wow. See, that's the, this is why I don't use the cloud lifter because it is very, 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 very bright. It sounds awesome. I can hear a little bit of background noise, but it's not that bad. I don't think it'll make it to production, but it sounds good. Isn't this isn't this awesome? Like it's really bright. Like I had to turn everything down. This will really give this 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 will really give your um your 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 amps, you know. It'll let them cool off and stuff like that. But this microphone runs really really hot. It's not like you can just play around with it. You got to to a degree know what you're doing. And this is V1. Let's see what V2 sounds like. Okay, now we're in vocal number two. And like I said, you can see it sounds a lot brighter. There's a lot more top end. Uh, this is designed to pick up um, a young lady's vocals way more clear. And you can hear the clarity. And you can hear the, you know, resonance more in her voice. That's what this is for. That's what it's for to capture. And it sounds pretty good. Um, a little bit scratchy at the top, but uh, that comes with some EQing. I'm not going to do the whole shebang right now. But you guys get the gist. And um, you got to take care of this microphone. It will give you some problems. <laughs> it will give you some problems if you don't. Okay. These go for about like 380 350 around that price range. Really dope. Let's do G. And this is for the guitar, and it goes back down a little bit, a little bit muffled, but it sounds pretty good. I'm pretty sure you can get some really good uh, sounds out of it with the acoustic and electric. So this is pretty dope. Let's go to dynamic. Now we're in dynamic, and wow, this thing sounds really good. Now, what you're listening to is a vintage, it sounds very vintage, and it sounds like a ribbon mic. So it sounds like, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. It gives you that old school kind of kind of muffled kind of, you know, vintage sound. And it sounds really good, too, when you also um, when you also uh, use instruments on it, because not just vocals can sound, you know, vintage instruments can sound vintage, too. So the vintage has become a sound pretty dope. Cool shit, huh? I just turn off the cloud lifter and let's get into the last couple of mics. Let's go. Back on the MV7. I actually really like like this stealth microphone. This is really dope. Um, set it back to V1. We'll do another show on it. You know what I'm saying? We'll definitely do another show on it. Um, I don't know how I had this key in it. Mm mm mm. -mm. But this is a key, and it puts it in, and it locks. But the microphone is still fairly wobbly. My next song I record, I'm going to use this. I tried to use it last time, but I didn't get a chance to even just record at all. So we're going to use this on the next song. Let me know how the vocals sound. All right. Um, I don't know which one is which. I know both of them are black. <laughs> I think this is the older one. So let's try this one. Okay. So let's get into one of my favorite companies, Electro Voice. Just like this pod mic, I fell in love with the side, uh, the side uh, gates. I don't know why. I think they're beautiful. 
But this one right here, I'm pretty sure this is the 320. This is the 320. This is the RE320. Very beautiful mic. I bought it because I thought it was the regular RE20. I don't know why mine came with these nails in it. We'll find out later. Really beautiful microphone. DJ Academics uses this. A couple of other people uses this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mic. Let's plug it in. See how it sounds. And this is bright. It's a bright dynamic mic. So let's take it out. Check it out. And uh, let me turn it back up. And there we go. Now we're speaking into the Electra Voice RE20. Really, really, really awesome microphone. Uh, the the variable D technology, which I'll show you on the sides, are to reject noise. Really, really beautiful microphone. This is bright. Um, this is not as bright as the uh, 27ND. The 27ND, you can just you can just do whatever you need to do with that thing. That thing's awesome. But really good microphone. I mean, I'm 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 enjoying it. Um, you can put on the kick filter. Here's the kick filter engage, and it kind of thins out the sound because of the uh for the drums. And then you put the you know you put the kick filter back on, and you get what you got right now. Um, not too much bass, but there is enough bass. You get uh, what's called dynamic bass. You know, um, the bass for dynamics, they range. They get real deep and then they get real, you know. But this this has a good amount of bass for it being a bright microphone. You can still tell that it's a dynamic microphone, just bright. Just bright. You dig? All right. So, um, let me see. Uh, I, th I think it's I think it's awesome. I love this microphone. This is actually the first Electra Voice microphone that I've bought and um, fell in love with it ever since. You know, so switch back to the MV7. Really beautiful mic. Really, really beautiful mic. Honestly, when I do my mic shows, y'all are going to see this is mic porn. Oh, shit. Hold on, y'all. Mic porn. All right. What else do we got here? We got this baby. I need to clean it. Um, And my, my duster just dropped. This has been a, a paperweight on my desk. This is a really good mic. This is I wouldn't buy the pop filter. I would not the pop filter, but I wouldn't buy the uh I would not buy the shock mount for this. This is the the Elgato Wave 3. Really beautiful microphone. You got your mute button at the top. Microphones like these. This is a condenser mic. This is an ice cream sandwich white uh ice cream sandwich mic. One of my favorite companies that I showed y'all earlier with the ENG mic. Lewitt, they helped design it. You want to speak into the mic this way. You understand what I'm saying? So it's on the stand, so you can kind of aim it up and speak into it. Um, don't use the stand. These are better on, uh, you know, on a, a boom arm. A lot of mics are better on a boom arm. These little cheap stands that they give y'all. Unless you got a table that can line everything up and stuff like that. Man, put this thing on a boom arm and just go on about your damn day. And it's plastic, you know. Um, of course, the... The, the, you know, what you would attach to boom arm, the metal housing, that's metal. But this is plastic, so you don't really got to do much. Just make sure you don't rumble the desk as much or bump it as much, and you you should be okay. And it picks up really good vocals. You can also EQ it. It comes with, uh you know, uh you know software, which you can EQ it with, and you can do a lot of great things with this microphone. But it will pick up stuff in the room. Make sure you EQ it right so that you're not picking up, uh you know, um... You're not picking up, uh, you know, uh, your your keys. Now, this baby right here, I bought this almost a year ago on my birthday. This was my birthday mic. This is the matte black version of uh, the RE20, and this is a RE20. Um, very, God damn it! hold on. That's because I put it in here wrong. That's why. Very beautiful microphone i've been doing damn near all my shows on on this mic this mic been out for a while um probably got a lot of dust on it because um i just set and forget um 
This is a beautiful microphone. I mean, I just look look at this shit. Variable D technology blocks out all the stuff on the side. Talking to that end. And um uh, gorgeous microphone. Let's hear how it sounds. And this is only a fraction of my locker, by the way, y'all. And now we're talking into the RE20, which is, if not the best <laughs> microphone I've ever used. I mean, I know I said that about a billion times, but this time I mean it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been using this microphone uh, for a long time. Um, good muffled sound. You can't beat it. Um, I've seen people sing with it. I've seen people do all kinds of stuff with it. Really dope ass microphone. Um, you can't go wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? You definitely can't go wrong with it. So, um, I would like to thank you guys for, uh, joining me today on today's mic, uh, today's, you know, mic school. Um, all individually, I'm going to go over all of these microphones and, uh, we got some tech shows on the way. Also, y'all seen what I've been doing with the groove boxes and stuff like that. It's just a lot of stuff to talk about, man. But anyway, man, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Send your boy something on the cash app. Make sure you guys hit the super chat, uh, whenever it comes back or the super thanks whenever I get, can get one of those. Um, these videos will probably be uploaded on a new channel i do have another channel that's out uh where i i don't think i want to send this to that channel but anyway when i update this it will be in the description okay well i'm out it's player talk radio thank you guys for enjoying today's show um <laughs> We also got a we also got an interface show coming up. Um, I got a I got a couple of dings and and knocks on this damn P4. I love this P4. I've been using the P4 for damn near almost every case scenario you can think of. But anyway, man, we out. It's player talk. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs>